Look, we're Clear. wearing khakis. <laughs> Torso khakis. There was a time where I only bought things in the gray shade, like the the cool colors, because it was just so much easier to, <laughs> to like put something together. If you got the warm colors and the cool colors, now all of a sudden you're getting dressed in the dark closet in the morning and you come out looking weird. Well, so you I, know, I, if you hire an architect, they might design a light for your closet. The problem is you, you wake other people up. That That's the problem. Uh, there you know, is a light in the closet, but... I look at it this way. You know, they're... They're, uh, they're, they're, they're supposed to be awake. Everybody's supposed to be awake, right? <laughs> I look at it this way. You're on my schedule. That's yeah. what. <laughs> I think you do think that because when I, when we were in DC, you're like up super early <laughs> or, or what we call up the, super late or what we call on the East time, you know, Eastern time zone, normal time, normal. You're right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was I was uh, awake pretty early. A little earlier than me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All of you West Coasters were like, what's this? Uh, I need coffee I'm first. I hate traveling to the East Coast just because of the time difference. That's the worst part of it, for sure. So it's, it's like the flight, it takes forever to get there. Like <laughs> traveling west is better. Come on, you know it. You it, actually get your time back when you travel west. <laughs> it's like a surprise when it comes home. It's like it didn't even take that long. Right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so okay, you have so continued Cormac's. <laughs> Architectural summer adventures. Um, what what is going on? What is in the water? How oh did gosh. this work out? I mean, it's just one thing after another. We've chronicled it on this podcast, and right. I can think we're going to continue to chronicle Cormac's. How can I fit another c word in here? <laughs> Con construction that doesn't sound right. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, well, I don't know. We'll have to ask all, AI all those for a Cormac's chronicling. <laughs> Cormac's curiosity. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. So, catch us up. There you go. Another C word. Catch us up. Catch us up. <laughs> since uh, it has been a while since we've talked, it is because we've, of various reasons. Yeah, I mean, had, some are just this happens, but other reasons as well. But um, and whatever, you, whatever you're willing to share, I, took, I, I would love to hear what what has happened in your chronicles. I took that ever so needed and rarely ever used and they call it oh yeah pto pto yeah <laughs> so yes decided to go and visit the office and just had this weird book where we're like okay we're coming now's the time if we're going to take any time off to take some time off just a little week but if you're if you plan it right Weeks usually end up being like, you know, 10 days if you're, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you if you're use, smart, if you're smart and you like kind of do yeah. everything. And, and I tried to be good. And, good on and so it with this particular trip back east, back all the way to the east coast. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Much shorter trip back east than yes, my trips back exactly. east, but still, but still here you are. Was going to be one where. The whole family wanted to go back, but because of a concert that my son had already bought tickets for, he was going to stay back, but then he was going to come later. And then I thought to myself, all right, are you really going to come uh, to Maryland and, you know, visit with friends and everything? So, oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Like, ask my wife, I'm like, how about this? Kids go back to Michigan on their own because they're adults and they can do that. Just so, you know, when you're raising kids and stuff and you're just, you don't. You're there. You don't. Yeah, exactly. You just don't picture You made that. it. Right. Good job. <laughs> Pat on the back. Exactly. So I said, I, I basically asked her, I was just like, what do you think about 
driving up the East Coast and going to Nova Scotia. She's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, why not? We've got passports, we'll travel, right? Mm-hmm. And with the with the knowledge that what it I was mean, really going to be, you you live across the street from Canada, basically, but yeah. you're you're talking much farther I'm away. I'm talking than... much further away, much okay. much further away. Because I'll I'll explain that in, in a in a skosh, in a Nova skosh, <laughs> in a Nova skosh. Uh, there you go. There's the title. All <laughs> all of the um, all of this was kind of a ruse because. One of the things that I wanted to do for our 25th wedding anniversary, and she'll probably kill me, but she doesn't listen to the show, show so she can't, Yeah, um, yeah she won't. is her 50th uh, birthday was this year as well. And so I've been calling this year. 29. 29. Sure. We'll go with that. Whatever. Yep. yep. No, actually, she <laughs> she owns up to it. She's like, I've, I've, okay. <laughs> I've earned it. Uh, uh-huh. At some point, the, the switch gets flipped and oh, you've yeah. earned it, right? Yeah. <laughs> denial, denial, denial. I've earned this, damn it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, all right. So, this was all sort of a ruse because I, one of the things that I wanted to do for our wedding anniversary is she is a massive fan, watches it all the time. I bought her the box set, the DVD set of Anna Green Gables. She's got the book series, everything. So she grew up watching the movies, quoting the movies, quotes the movies to my daughter all the time. And so she's a huge fan, which is great. And where it was filmed, where it took place, and where the author was born and raised was in Prince Edward Island. And so that was really the plan, is that, sure, we'll go to Nova Scotia, or we'll... But really where we're going is we're going to go to Prince Edward Island. But we had a long trip and we weren't going to take this trip, try to like pound out, I don't know, somewhere around the neighborhood of like 13 to 1500 miles in like a day or two. We paced ourselves, made it kind of an adventure. And Mm -hmm. so as we were driving, I found the opportunity to say, hey, I think we need to stop for a break. Took the opportunity to stop in multiple places just to break it up, but also do some exploring. And one of the first stops was in Yale, well, New Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I think there's some some Louis Kahn buildings here. And I think there there might be an Aero Saarinen building here. And so <laughs> the good thing is, is l- let me, let me preface this by saying that I do have a wife that appreciates architecture and does actually enjoy some of these side trips. So I'm not, it's not an, well, especially task. if they're amazing, right? Yes. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. <laughs> and okay. And so the, the art museum by Khan got a chance to, you know, get out, walk around. It, the art museum? What You didn't go to Texas. What are you talking about? No, no, the, the, uh, the Yale uh, <laughs> Museum of Art. I don't, okay, so the, I'm, I'm hearing this for the first time now too, yes. listeners. So yeah. so Cormac needs to give a little more context here. A little so, more yeah, context. Get, I don't us, have, I don't have any of the pictures up to like flash to you guys right now. But right, um, well. but we'll, we'll put them in the show notes. We So obviously there's a few Louis Kahn buildings on Yale's campus, one of them being an art museum. And that one, it's, it's interesting, beautiful. Like, you know, you're driving down the road and it like, because of the way that the road kind of shifts right as you're at a light, you're staring right face to face with it. And it's kind of interesting because I'm curious what everybody thinks of that building. Because what came first, the building or the road? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> probably the road, because there's a lot of old. Well, then he in. that, but yeah, lucky. Yeah, That's good. And then we saw the whale, which if anybody knows what the whale is, the whale is actually Aero Saarinen's hockey arena on Yale's campus, and amazing the Yale whale, just an amazing building. Everything that you 
come to expect and love out of Saarinen's work. This beautiful kind of like rolling concrete that you just look at it and you're like, how? How? I'll tell you what I would expect and love is some images via text or Instagram from you along this this trip. Jeez, what? You, you are know, sl- seriously slacking. It, you were right. You are absolutely right about that because I... You, you've, Honestly, you've, you've gone internal here. You've you've gone dark on us. Comic. I I took I took some pictures and I did post some pictures, but not a lot. And I am way behind because I do have a lot of pictures to take. Because um, <laughs> you have a lot to go through. I'm, I have, a, I'm sure I have you, a lot to go through. And as you can imagine, what thousands. is what is the what is the one thing that happens to you when you come back from a vacation? You start working, yeah. You but, get sidetracked. But what? It, but <laughs> what is inevitably the issue when you come back is that you are bombarded with everything. Hey, Cormac, while you were gone, you know we did this, yeah. this, this, and this, and we really need you to kind of take a look at this. That's why you got to do it along the way, however imperfect it may be. Yeah, I. You got to be in the moment. You got. Yeah. You got. We need to. You need to allow us to be in the moment with you. So that exactly. So that is why. But I will say that. I just tried to be present for my wife. No, I appreciate. I, and, I can appreciate that. You know, I'm just did, giving you a hard oh, time yeah, here. Totally, I I, I, <laughs> I I get it, and I understand because here we're going to be talking about like this little architectural trip that I took with no visual aids. You're just going to have to draw it out of me of like, what did you see? Look it up. Look it up, people. Look them up. Uh, coastal Maine. I mean, what can I say about Coastal Maine other than the fact that, damn damn it's bucket list it's these it's these just amazing so the thing that i started to appreciate on this trip because one of the things that we did is we got we took a lot of like side trips into the old downtown you know the downtowns that the highways pass by and you got to see the way the town actually lives in america they call that the business loop Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> off the highway. <laughs> the, the, right. Yes. But the business loop yep. is where the life of the town actually is. And right. so it was just amazing to kind of like stop at some of these little small towns in Maine. Yes, we actually did drive through Kenny Bunkport and did not get a chance to get. So we, because of we were driving to, I don't know if, and, and this is not a sponsor ad, but. I don't know if you've ever used the Hotels Tonight app. No, but you tell me about it all the I time. I tell you about it all the time. It's so, how useful it is. So what we... I have a travel trailer. My hotel is on the back of my truck. This is true. Right? This is true. <laughs> and I, gosh, you know, I will say that I, I kept seeing all of these camper vans and campers and kind of like the the little adventure vans now that everybody has. Yeah. And just kind of looked at them as just think of how much money I could be saving if I wasn't get, trying to find a hotel. No, those those you just spend all the money up front and then, there you, go. <laughs> then you slowly very slowly get it back. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Prepaid hotel. That's all that is. Something must have been going <laughs> on in Maine where from Portland to Bangor, Maine there was nothing. There was no hotels available. There was, we called, we honestly, not only did we use the app, we looked at other apps, we looked at hotel apps, we looked at everything. There was not a room to be had anywhere. I have no idea. We've experienced this a few times where we were just driving and they're like, sorry, hon, but we're booked up because there's a convention in town. And like within 200 miles of wherever that convention was, there wasn't anything. We experienced this. It seems like on the East Coast, that would be like more in the fall because of just the fall well, colors and things like that. I mean, maybe it's just summer vacation. We you know. we were told you're looking for a hotel and we were, it was the weekend. And so we were trying to find a hotel as we were driving up the East Coast on a weekend where, a summer weekend where everybody has already got it which I can appreciate that because we stopped and looked at some amazing views. I could not convince my wife to just get an air mattress and put it in the back of the truck and and crash out there. But she wanted what was called a real bed. What? What's that? (laughs) 
yeah. <laughs> what kind of adventure was this? I know. Jeez. I know. There was no sense of adventure. <laughs> but, but what was amazing about it is we did happen to find like all of, not only just like the, the great little downtowns, but also had the opportunity to find some masterworks. And Yale, I had, I had never been to Yale. I've never been to New Haven, Connecticut. And mm-hmm. as someone in higher ed, it was actually great to just, we got out and we walked around campus and just kind of, there were, there was a lot of different like alumni events seemingly going on. There were new student tours and stuff. And so you got to see kind of like how both students and alumni were interacting with the university. And it's good to see because this is what we do. Like this is what, you know, this is what I've been doing for the past decade of my life is working on higher education buildings and campus planning and things like that. And to, to honestly see them in both like the active days of during the school year, but also how, how do they stand up and how do they live through summer or off, you know, the non-peak hours. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was great to just see it. It was, it's a very, very active community, very active. Like even if the school's not in town, you know, people, townies are walking through campus. But it was, it's just a, it's a, it's a cute, uh, cute town, cute town, cute city. Cause it is actually a decent sized town, city, town, city, town, <laughs> what do you want to call it? Whatever it is. Uh, New Haven, you're yeah. a city to me or town, I'm sure. But, um, I know that there might be somebody who's listening, who is a Yale that you know, will correct me on this. I'll just wait for that one. Email Cormac. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll wait for that. But, um, but. It, it was great to just, again, not have to convince my wife to go and look at a... She did, however, refuse to get out when I was walking around the, the whale because I, she was done. She was tired. She had enough. She was hungry. And I had to go see a building instead of feed her. <laughs> Priorities, man. Priorities. Priorities. Like concrete, Good job. Concrete over caviar, woman. <laughs> <laughs> It's your 25th wedding anniversary. Yeah. I'm going to go see some architecture real quick. Hang on. You know, I did find a nice um, Italian restaurant, had a, a fantastic five-course meal, um, and then hit the road with half of it in a box because she wanted to go and find a hotel. Um, she wanted to at least make it to Maine, and then we made it to Maine kept, and then realized that we'd have to keep driving for a while. I will say that driving to... Canada, probably any foreign country, but when you're crossing over the border on the ground and they start asking you all sorts of questions about why you're there, can we see your itinerary and all this other stuff, and you're trying to convince them that you are a sane person and safe person and you have no itinerary, you're making it up as you're going along, and you only have one area that you actually have reservations for. Yeah, the rest of the days that you're doing, you're just going to try to figure it out when you're there. And they looked at me so skeptically. You know, like no one does that anymore, I guess. I, I, I'm just holding strong to that, like just making it up as you go along kind of like uh, yeah, travel philosophy. Yeah. It, sh- it should be allowed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the uh, border guards were, were highly suspect. They, you know, you would, they were like, do you have any weapons on you? Like, no. Do you have any weapons in the car? No. It's just like, I'm not that kind of American. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, no. She was, she was very like skeptical about the whole thing. I'm like, no, I was seriously not that one, you know, not that guy. So it was, it was really sort of interesting. So then we get to Prince Edward Island was our first destination and we did everything in a Green Gables. Yes, they have the and Green Gables historic site, because even though the book is a work of fiction, it still is all based off of the writer's childhood and life. And so where she lived and the adjacent property that was patterned after Green Gables actually are real buildings and were where her, her cousins lived. And so like a lot of the stories that she was telling about the main character, Anne Shirley, was all based off of actual places and that you could visit. And so, of course, my wife uh, cried when she saw it because it's, it's totally a part of her life. And 
And, yeah. and this was the thing is like, you know, this is, it was so like amazing that there were people from all over the world. I am not, that is not hyperbole, all over the world there visiting this site. And it goes to show you how, you know, not only story, but even like the places in story that the you know, backdrop, like the backdrop, the story, the, yeah, or the, yeah, the environment, shall we say the architecture of affects people and because like the main one of one of the two main characters of the stories is Anne Shirley and the Green Gables house and so the people came from all over the world uh they become a character right yeah I mean that that is interesting about space and places yeah. that they can actually become a character I think about Kubrick films right where oh absolutely <laughs> the, yeah the hotel and you know, there's, you know, the psycho house yeah. and there's, there's so many examples of that kind of thing. And it, it actually is a character in the story. Right. It's, it's pretty incredible. Right. Right. So for her, I bet it was extremely like not only nostalgic, but just cathartic to actually mm -hmm. go. I'm sure she imagined herself there someday. She and then imagined there she was. herself there all the time as she was just like, I think I was, I was reborn from, I lived in the, the Victorian era. Yeah. You know, she says, I know I did. Yeah. And, that's past lives. Yeah, there you exactly. Go. And, yeah. and so, yeah, but she's also just pictured herself on the cliffs, the Cavendish cliffs where, you know, like some of the, the main scenes in the book and in the, in the movies take place. And so there, of course we were to, to celebrate And this was a belated celebration because I mean, we did have a, an actual, like on the day of our wedding anniversary, but time, family, commitments, and everything else got in the way. Dude, of I us. just recently had an anniversary and I got, I got flowers for my wife and I'm, I'm not complaining at all. My, I, I love my wife's response. She's like, what are the flowers for? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm not, I just think, I always think it's so funny. <laughs> well, I, we've done that so many times. We've been sick on our anniversary. You know, somebody has been out of I was even out of town at an AIA convention, spending time with you rather than my wife. Oh, so, yeah. You know, there's been all of these different occasions <laughs> where like, we just don't celebrate it the yeah. way that normal people that's do. That's how things work. That yeah. That's normal that's life right life. there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. this time I, I, you know, said like, this is our 25th. We've, we've got to do something special on this one. And she wasn't expecting anything and I wasn't even letting her know. So. She thought that our wedding anniversary was... Oh, so this was like an internal monologue that you were having. Yeah. We, we need to do something special for this. Yes, that was you talking to you. That was me you. talking to okay. you. Okay. Yeah. She, right. you know, again, wasn't expecting... She was probably, you know, expecting the, oh, what are these flowers for? You know, kind of thing. And we did have a nice dinner together and spent some uh, oh, a weekend antiquing, I believe. That was, and that's what she thought our wedding anniversary was. And she, in her own words, she was like, oh, this is perfect. Like, You're, you are officially uh, old. Uh, like, <laughs> we spent a weekend antiquing. <laughs> what's sad about antiquing now is when you go in. It's not even like really antiques anymore. It's when you go, oh, I had that I mean, when I was like, a kid. Yeah, it's stuff from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> the totally <laughs> total side note here if you go to the henry ford museum in, in the detroit metro area they have this whole area dedicated to everything we grew up on everything we grew up on there's the first mac there's simon go. there's all of these yeah. things there's like <laughs> all of these things and you're like yeah i had that i had that oh commodore 64 Oh, I wanted that. Yeah, exactly. Whatever it was. Or, or I wanted that. Or I had a friend man, who had that, that and I, you know, I coveted like, it. Yeah. Oh, look at these rich people had this kind of thing. Because they, they even have like a, a teenager's bedroom set up. You're like, what is the t nice. typical teenager from the 80s? That's and, awesome. And you look at it and you're like. Just a time capsule. And what was funny is like the last time we were there, I was standing around with a bunch of other uh, Gen Xers. And I just looked at them. I'm like, well. We're museum pieces. Yeah. <laughs> and they all just look at you like, Official. and they, every one of them just kind of like drop their head, shake it a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Those but, are the days. Yeah. Come on, people. 
But what was great about um, PE Island was is just this little little bit of an exploration because look at you, you're like a local <laughs> calling it PE Island. Just. I don't even know if they're locals. <laughs> although <laughs> you you've adopted uh, it as your second. Although home. I will say that when I'm, I'm I don't want to jump ahead in the story, but there was somebody who definitely called me out as, yeah, you can tell you're not local, was their exact words <laughs> well, to me when I said a and, certain word. Uh, and there you are. Exactly. Yeah, you're not. So not a, not a local. Yeah. Although there's an interesting accent in PE Island where it's kind of, it, it kind of almost is a mix between Irish and uh, Minnesotan. There's like this interesting accent. Um, and it, you could probably like actually detect the path. That oh yeah. Took. Yeah. So, you know, that was it. Like, <laughs> you know, except you're talking if, about like kind of a reversal of, of exactly. That, if, if well, no, because so know. like everybody, so one of the other reasons why we wanted to go there is this, this is Nova Scotia has roots in my family's history. And so, you know, like my yeah, family same. immigrated from Ireland to Nova Scotia, from Nova Scotia to the United States. And there's still a lot of my family that had immigrated originally from from Ireland to Nova Scotia, still in Nova Scotia. In fact, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you why in a sec. But, and so that was one of the reasons why we wanted to go to this, um, go on this trip as well. It's because there's family history on both sides. Well, um, so we decided to explore Prince Edward Island and drive around there as much as we can and see as much as we can. It's not that big. So if you're not deliberately staying at one of the resorts or like a local who really kind of knows where you're at, you know, you, you sort of like, yeah, no, sort of, you know, not a lot to see. You can see it all pretty quickly. You can see it all pretty yeah. quickly. So when we did, so we decided let's go down to Halifax and explore around Halifax. We took a, um, a ferry across the, the North Atlantic from Prince Edward Island to Nova Scotia and kind of like drove in and then ultimately ended up driving into, to Halifax. And what's amazing is you can see the roots of Halifax being a old fishing town, but also a major seaport for where a lot of immigration happened. A lot of immigrants came to Canada, but they came through Halifax. And mm -hmm. so Halifax was sort of the Ellis Island of Canada. Right. So fair enough, they've got the, the Canadian Immigration Museum. And so, of course, we had to go there because I kind of wanted to see, look at some of my you know family history. And just see kind of like, okay, when did my grandparents actually come over from Ireland? So you have access, you can actually go through yeah. the, like go through the records yes. and, yeah, you know, that's Which cool. Which was amazing. But what was even more amazing about it is, is that the U.S. census has actually got my grandmother's or my, sorry, my great grandmother's, um, birthplace wrong. She was not born in Ireland. Mm. She's actually been in Canada for generations, but in, mm. in Newfoundland. It's like a, a lot of her family. And so she had immigrated from Newfoundland to, to, um, Nova Scotia kind of back when there was like no real, like they weren't necessarily part of Canada in the way that they are now. They, they were like kind of these individual provinces. There was a lot. It, so there was the, and you'll, you'll appreciate this with your family lineage. They, she came from, their family did come from Ireland. But their other parts of her family also came from the Nordic region, the Scandinavia. And so there's a lot of Scandinavian, Irish, and Scottish in Newfoundland, Labrador, and Nova Scotia. And so there's now, now I have for a future trip, even more to explore, um, yeah. because these are like islands. Uh, I would have had you look up my grandmother's side of the family if I knew you were there because, uh, yeah, I, there's my my dad's side, his mother's side came through that way, the Patrickan family. So Ireland to Canada to there's, Kansas. 
Yeah. Well, there's still a little bit of of lineage history that I need to look up, and it's my connection um, through my grandmother to the Troxels. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's exactly. right. I <laughs> so I still about need that. to figure that out. So yeah, yeah. So it was really interesting, and so as we know, because we had already talked about this, that. If I was going to be in the area, if I was going to be in Nova Scotia, there is one person that I was going to be looking up. For eagle-eyed listeners right now, they may remember a previous conversation of something that happened at the AIA conference in Washington, D.C. in June. Somebody geeked out. Maybe catch everybody up. Give give everybody, again, a little bit of context. So at, at the AIA convention in June, I was at the... Lake Flato, um, discussion on design and me and our, our buddy Brett were sitting near the front row and I'm sitting here chatting with him and all that other stuff. And he's kind of like bumping me. He's like elbowing me. He's like, Hey, Hey, there's your boy. And I'm like, what, what? And then it, at first I didn't see who, you know, I saw, um, Steve Ehrlich. Oh, hey, Steve Ehrlich's there, you know, kind of like walking by. And then I saw Brett's like yeah. not the other yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I saw walking next to him, Brian McKay Lyons. And so when I had confronted him, which sounds like a very harsh word. You stopped. I stopped him. I was going to, I, I was not, politely. again, not going to be, I was him. again, not going to be that guy that followed him in the bathrooms. But when I turned the corner and realized, oh, they're in the bathrooms. I'm not going to do that. But met him out in the corridor we sat and we chatted. I, I had mentioned to him that we'd be coming into Nova Scotia. And he's like, oh, you got to look me up. And so I did, which was great. I did, <laughs> which was amazing. But so as we're sitting here, we're chatting. And, and again, he's very much like the border guard. It's like, oh, we're only going to be there for a little bit of time. And it, trying to explain to everybody, this is just a scouting mission. This isn't this isn't like the big grand. We've already made a pact with ourselves that the next time we go back, it's a two week vacation. It is not a like two day vacation here, two day vacation there. And then we're kind of out. It is a, we're, we need to like, it, it, it was more, I, the whole thing was basically all about getting my wife to Green Gables and her experiencing that. Sure it was. That was and, yep. and yes, and right. then so then the follow up. <laughs> and he, yes, I still wanted to, but um, so so <laughs> the story behind the, the story, story behind <laughs> the story. So so we did go to Lunenburg, which is where Brian McKay, one of Brian McKay. So Brian McKay Lions has got or McKay Lions Sweet Apple is the firm, but Brian McKay Lions has got his office in Nova Scotia. He has an office in Lunenburg. And he actually also has an office in Portland, Oregon, uh, because oh. they are doing, I'm saying. You need to get him on the podcast. We, um, and that's all I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm thinking we might be able to. Okay. Let's do um, it. And so, so it was funny is here you, here you are. It's just like, oh, you don't want to meet your heroes kind of thing. And, you know, again. I appreciate the work that he does. I appreciate the regionalism. I mean, you know, regionalism, regionalism is something that I learned to love and appreciate through the rural studio and the teachings of Sam Mockby and all of these other, some, a lot of the architecture firms that I really like are regionalists, really. The Marlon yeah. Blackwells, the most Lake Flatos. Most architects. You know. Well, yeah, I and shouldn't say most architects, but I would say, you know, people well, do kind of specialize it's, regionally. It's, so. it's different, though, when we're talking about, I don't really want to say Starkitect, but I guess Starkitect. It's like they're, like, you know, Sam. In your eyes. Yeah, in, our, yeah, in, in our, our eyes. eyes. Yeah. You know, right. you know, Sam Mockby, you know, he practiced in the Southeast and it was all about like the, the, the reinterpretation of the way that people lived, especially like the trailer, the, and, <laughs> right. And, you know, in the evolution of that, in the materiality and, and everything else. And it was just some amazing work that he did. And it's this, you see the same thing with a lot of these architects and too many to name, but we, sure. 
you know, Faye Jones and all of these other ones. Schindler know, comes Schindler, to mind, you know, exactly. Like, all of yeah. these people, like, right. you know, they really were developing a language of their area, right? You know? Yeah. And, and, and I can I. Materiality, yeah. right? All kinds of things. And, I, yeah. and, and honestly, because yeah. of like the emotional connection that I have or like this, this, it, it, it's this weird emotional draw to Nova Scotia that I have that, of course, I never knew anything about only because of the fact that I knew my grandfather was born there. I knew that my family yeah. had emigrated Same. to there. So I like, had this just draw. And the more and more I was learning about it back in the day and then into ar architecture school and learning about Brian, it's just this amazing stuff. It's just like, you know, here's somebody who's in tune with the place and is developing a language of architecture that is drawing inspiration from the place and, and to finally, yeah, yeah, totally. to finally get a chance to actually see where he, I just have yeah. to say like Rand Elliott, oh right? Like, gosh, like yes, an amazing example yes. of that kind of thing. Rand yeah, Elliott, of course. Right. It's just like to finally get a chance to see like where, you know, the place where he draws a lot of his inspiration from, for the work that he does. It's just like, yeah, I get it. I get it. This is this, you can see the, the lifeblood of the work that he does in the place that he's from. And it was just amazing to see it. So like, so like we, we pull up and, um, the first thing we do is we pull up and you know, show my age again there, you know, Evan, we pull up in front of an antique store. <laughs> <laughs> it's so uh, we go into there first and then I'm, I'm kind of like rushing here. I'm like, I want to, this is how you break the ice when you go to a new location. Yeah, exactly. It's just <laughs> my, my wife truly believes that we are going to find that, you know, how you hear all these stories of like people who find like these hidden treasures of like, Hey, I bought a, um, a Picasso for like 50 cents at, <laughs> I just saw a video of somebody who scored like two Eames lounges with, with Ottomans at a, <laughs> <laughs> Three of them actually. So <laughs> right, and it was like behind me is <laughs> uh, a behind me is a knockoff Eames lounger, but not not the Plycraft one, but um, a Selig one, which is a little bit closer to like more. It, it's closer to the the style of the Herman Miller Eames lounger, but got mm, the whole okay. thing for three hundred bucks. And still, you know, great condition. It's still a mid-century seat. It looks, it, it's in great condition and all that other stuff. And, Especially with the bouquet in, in your image yeah. here. Like, you can't even tell. It's perfect. Yeah, I know. It's a great, it's a great Arcuspeak prop. <laughs> yeah. I, every time I sit there, it's just like, yeah, no, it's, no one can see it. Um, there there was right. one. There, <laughs> You're covering yeah, it up. <laughs> there was one where, one setup that I had that it was actually over my left shoulder here. You could see it. But anyway, so behind the so, scenes of the Arctic yeah, Speak podcast. So I, so I finally say, you know, hey, there's a building I want to go check out down there, which happened to also be his building that he did. Is this code? Like your wife has got she to know knows. what that means. <laughs> so so we're walk so we're walking up and I see Hey uh... I see this 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 guy all dressed in black standing outside this building with his back towards us and I'm like Hey, there's Brian McKay Lyon. She goes, the building? I'm like, no, no, the dude. The, the, the dude. And so she's like, all right, see you later. Like, <laughs> she's like, yeah. she let me kind of like sc scurry up there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I walk up. Go fanboy. Go fanboy over there. <laughs> yeah, totally. And so I walk up and I'm like, Brian? And he like turns around and goes, like, hey, I remember you. <laughs> I'm like, Whew, good. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Like, nice. I'm glad because then this will be, because if not, this will be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> uh, exactly. So we had a few conversations before I left anyway, um, you know, just to kind of let him know that I was going to be in town and that if he was even remotely around, I'm going to be knocking on his office door. And it's such a, it's a great little office. It's, it's a smaller satellite office, probably, I don't know, maybe a, six, seven person setup um, that just fits in beautifully with his old fishing village. Did I not send you pictures of Lunenburg? Of like the... 
I don't. Yeah, okay. I think you did because it reminded me of uh, some stuff I visited in. Yes, Canada, maybe, in 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 very in very, and it draws a lot of from those coastal those coastal fishing villages in in Europe. Right. You know, in in the North Atlantic, and just you know those very very vibrant colors. Um, mm -hmm. you know these in. So you had the. It's very picturesque. It is. Yeah, and the scale is. is very small yeah. of everything, but it's just kind of. It's really beautiful how it is just kind of organically grown over time, and you can just yeah. see it. You yeah. can you can see the layers, right? It's incredible. And I may be getting this wrong and exactly. So it is a United. It's a UNESCO World Heritage District, and it okay. is one of two in. North America, and I believe Quebec City, I could be wrong, is the other uh, mm. UNESCO World Heritage District, um, which, by the way, we to just, you know, to just, just, just drop dropping names. that name yeah. there. Um, but, um, <laughs> and so we sat there and we talked for a while. My wife was was sitting there and, and we just had to. You told me that you talked to them and I'm like, and you recorded it, right? <laughs> Come on. I should have, I should have, you know, I, I should have, but I bet, I bet it would have been, it would have been cool. Oh, the, yeah. the thing, it was so fun though, but because, so we talked about a lot of things, including American politics, which I'd just say right now, not a fan. So he isn't, no. okay. uh, not no which who, who would be, yeah. And it's, oh my gosh, it's so like. In recent years, and I'm not even going to go here, but I am going to at least just say that in, in recent times, in the many different client meetings with overseas clients, and then with the meeting with Brian and all these other people, people are talking, the world is talking about America, and the world is talking mm -hmm. about American politics, and none of it is favorable. But, and sure. I'm going to move on, because this is not the show, and we ain't talking. Um, <laughs> but what was, what was amazing? And, and this was just like, for him to give me this time was great because we sat there and he pulled out his iPad and we zoomed around the islands and he was showing me all of these like favorite places and stuff like that. He's like, you know, this is not too far of a drive. Go see this. And the, the this next is the time, best way I, to get the oh insight Lord, about yes. anywhere. Yeah. Just you, you need someone yeah. like that who could just say you need to do this and this and this and this. And that's the best kind yeah. of tour guide there is. Because yeah, he was like, he goes, obviously you're not doing it now, but the next time you're here, you need to go and spend some time here because this is the most amazing place on the, in Nova Scotia. And it's like on the far end, closer to where my people are from, my people. <laughs> and, and so, um, and, and so we were just, he was like walking through his favorite spots, his favorite locations, places that you, as a local, you know, when you're just sitting there with pride talking about your place, you know, that was, that was the time that I got from him, which was just amazing because that's cool. Again, this is like, I sort of always lament about some of the choices that I made about how, of what I practice because mm -hmm. I've, been at firms that were small firms that were deeply rooted in, like say St. Petersburg, when I worked for the small firm there, which now a friend of mine owns and how deeply rooted it is in, you know, creating a language of architecture that's based off of the place it is. And to be, and again, like I said, to be sitting there in his office and you can kind of see the inspirational roots of all of, maybe not all, but, but most of the work that he had on display. And then you see like all of these nice physical models that he's built from the, you know, like the slide house or the two hull house and all of these other houses and stuff that. Can you talk about that real quick before you, I mean, just, just talk about that property oh, and what's going yeah. on there, because I'm sure there's a lot of people who've never heard okay, about that. So. I mean, if you want to finish what you're doing and then no, and then no, no, talk no, because because all order you think no, because all of it actually leads into. So he's like, he he basically said, and he he may have said this, and I may have interpreted it as, oh, why don't you just drive out to my property and drive around and you can look and see all of this stuff. <laughs> he may or may not have said that, but that's what I heard, <laughs> and that's what I did. 
Yeah. So talk about the property. It's like, so what is this? the like, farm. Because who, who, um, yeah. And this is which crazy. is amazing because like, so some of the houses that I was introduced to his work are on his property. It is this big, big property overlooking the Atlantic Ocean on the rocky coast of Nova Scotia. And there you just see all, you, you see like this, what's amazing about it is you see this evolution of his work. You know, you see the slide house, which is, if anybody is familiar with the slide house and, and if not, we can put a link to the, to his website that you you're going to have to yeah, put I'm, links I'm to all have these ton, yep. tons of links. Yeah. But the slide house is basically the, the, the hill is sloping and you basically, you took this box and it looks like the box is like, you know, falling, sliding down Rotated. the hill, but it's really oh, yeah. not in, but the, then you have like this horizontal line of the windows cutting through that, you know, is what appears to be diagonally cutting through, but it's basically cutting through the plane. And so it, the diagram is the very diag clear. Um, the oh part of the design is very it, clear. And the people. execution yeah. is very clear too. Going back to that whole like idea and execution thing that I've been talking. And so, so, but, but I mean, you, like all of these houses that I became familiar with his work, there's a lot of them in this, in this area. And then there's some evolutions of some, some newer stuff. These cottages, there's the ghost cottages or there's his own personal houses there. And then there's uh, a lot of Airbnb rentals and stuff that he now has that we're part of, I think his, his ghost studio that he had at one time. I did find out that they do offer like, I don't know if it's a summer internship or something that, you know, basically you I guess, I guess come work for him and also you know, live and work on the farm. You'd be working on the farm too. And I'm like, I'm curious if there's an age cut. This <laughs> yeah, I mean, like drag me my fifty-four-year-old <laughs> honey out there. And, I could make it work. I mean, I, if if he needs me to shear the the sheep that were roaming around the the farm, I, I can do that. I, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. You know. Just watch some YouTube exactly. videos. I'll be there. Look, you know how many times you and I have done mechanical work on vehicles by YouTube? I'm pretty sure. Look, I've watched Clarkson's farm. <laughs> yeah, I can, I do, can it. do it. If he can do it, I can do it. But I mean, there was just amazing work out there that just like, it was, it was so funny. It's like, I was driving uphill and you're basically driving uphill and you're like staring up into the sky. That's how like the steep, the, the slope is. And I can't see the crest of the hill. And I like, you know, you just kind of like feel it, your, your vehicle drop. Kind of creep over so the top. So you creep over the top yeah. and then it just opens this view up. To like, you, you get to see like all of the Atlantic, the Atlantic coast of his property and you, you just, and then it just opens this view of like all these works of his dotting the, dotting the horizon and dotting your objects and, it's and just landscapes, like, right? Oh my gosh. And there's so, <laughs> yeah. in you know, like what we were talking. And they're all yeah, different. They're all different. And, but like what we were talking about with Frank Lloyd Wright in his philosophy of being of the landscape and not on the organic. landscape. Oh, that's right. You know, the quote. Yeah. He had that quote. Well, but I mean. <laughs> the architecture is more organic but than, it, <laughs> than nature. <laughs> well, no, not that. Not, no, 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 not that one. But just the, the you know, being being of the landscape rather than on the landscape mm -hmm. is yeah. all of these are so beautifully blended in that they look like they belong there. You know, it's. A, What's interesting, though, is they are so different and yet you can kind of see a yeah. thread because of yeah. that, maybe because of that regionalism yes. you were talking about, but it's like materiality, exactly. the way that they've weathered over mm -hmm. time, all that is a, is a big part of it. I think and you, it's, and so it's pretty incredible. You get to see the evolution, not only of his, let's say initial understanding and his initial interpretation of the regional architecture and how he interpreted it to then this kind of, evolving idea and notion of what architecture is and what place is. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of an amazing, it, it honestly is really amazing to see all of that, like pulled together so that you can sort of see almost like you're looking at an anthology book of somebody and you see like their, their career, their span of their career. You can see it in the landscape and it's just, it's, it's, mm. it's just so cool. Uh, yeah. And 
I, I think so. Like then we were driving around the landscape and, the, and then as we were driving out, I saw kind of a dirt road that there was another house on and I'm like, and then there was like a, a sign, a for sale sign. And so I'm like, yeah, let's just go and look and see what our future property could be. And I, I drive up there and then happened to be like a couple of the, the, the Shavik like work trucks or something like kind of like came up. And so as we were kind of like driving around, I kind of like waved at them. They waved at me, but they were there to see it, make sure I wasn't up to no good, which mm -hmm. no one can ever ensure that. Like I'm always up to no good. So <laughs> nice try. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you looked very threatening. I did. <laughs> I had <laughs> always I had an Auburn yeah. baseball cap on. You know how that is. I'm from the sale. Mm. <laughs> yeah, red flag right there. No, no, no red flags. <laughs> 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 but so that portion of the trip, and there is a lot more, uh, but that portion of the trip where, you know, I, I got to see. So it was interesting. It's like that portion of the trip, we got to fulfill two bucket, two bucket lists. My wife's finally getting a chance to see, experience, tour, and walk around the grounds and touch the same things that Lucy Maud Montgomery had touched and see the inspirations of what she, of what she saw when she was writing those books. And so my wife got a chance to see all of that. And I got to see like one of my favorite living architects at their office, got to drive around some of their work. And kind of just plan the next trip there so I can spend maybe a little bit more time and maybe bring you along and maybe we can do a podcast recording with him on like sipping tea and coffee overlooking the, the Atlantic Ocean. Because that sounds great. <clears throat> it does sound great. So, and Man, yeah. what the heck? <laughs> this is like chapter it, five in Cormac's... It was Summer architectural yeah, adventures. Was, this is insane. It, it was so not planned, but happened beautifully. Just kind of like, you know, when we were talking with Angelo about our trip and kind of pulling all of that together, where we had like all of this big plans of like everything that we wanted to see. And we only got to see like a small portion of it, but half of it was made up and half of it was planned. It was sort of the same thing, but. Like, most of this one was made up, but still somewhat planned, at least just to get her up there without her really kind of knowing it, knowing it, but not really knowing it. She didn't really know where we were really going. And that was the, that was the joy of that one is just like, not going to tell you that, but I will say that if anybody plays the alphabet game when they're driving, which is basically finding words that start with A, B, C, you know, all the way through Canada is brilliant for that yes there are large stretches <laughs> of it why because the signs are in both english and in french so mm. damn sure can find that cue that you rarely can ever find on american road signs yeah. or cars but quebec thank you because there I, it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's cool oh i'm super jealous that's yeah. awesome that you got to do that so yeah Call him up. Get him on the get him on get the him podcast. On. Let's do this. I think it'd be fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We'll have to do it. All right. Well, is there anything else? Are we gonna we're gonna take some more summer vacation? Well we can't even tell you. I mean, you know, I mean I am. Yeah. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I've been working my booty yeah. off here. I'm ready for one. Oh my god. Well you have yeah. you do actually have a trip coming up. I have I have made reservations. I am I don't there's many miles involved in ours, but yeah, we'll be we'll be road trip well, into South Dakota in a couple of weeks. Well, so. your so how many how many miles is that? Because I'll, I'll say I put I put just around a little over five thousand miles on my car from Detroit to DC of you did. to Nova Scotia. It's kind of what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I look up like Custer, South Dakota. It is a uh, twenty hours yeah. of driving. It is. Uh, let me click on it. And see, it's uh, it's thirteen hundred and thirty-five miles to get there. Okay. So 
That's the minimum. Okay. It's at least 2,600. It'll be quite a bit more yeah. than that. Once so, we're done. Be- oh, I'm not even going that way. I'm going up. I'm going through Boise. Boise. I'm going. I'm going the northern route. I'm going yeah. Boise, Idaho Falls. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, yeah, and I'm not going to go down through Salt Lake City, which is the faster route. But have you ever been to Idaho? It's not that much faster, and uh, and we're going to go through the Tetons oh, nice. and, and stuff like that. So through like Jackson, uh, Wyoming, and that kind of area. So yeah, there's gonna there's a lot going on on this trip, and I figured I had to start planning it. <laughs> It is literally like less than two weeks away. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> well. It's going to be a big I one. I am going to say in future episode, you know, we'll definitely talk about that. Oh, uh, you know, if we want to talk a little bit about like my impression of Quebec City and public spaces and where America went wrong with creating these beautiful like little. Oh, the grass is greener oh, over there. Gosh. <laughs> Quebec City. <laughs> Wow. Like <laughs> old Quebec City, man, you know, urban planning, it is the closest thing to France outside of France. Um, it really oh, yeah. is. And uh, <laughs> although uh, every, so you walk into every place, you know, it's just like, bonjour. And you're like, hello. So I just I heard it's a different version of French there. Is that, well, what, do you know anything about if, that? If you believe everything that I have heard and everything else, that because it was isolated, it is actually a purer form of French than what is spoken in France. Um, so French, France, French has evolved. has evolved. Is that what you're saying? And, and, and this one and did, it did not. not it has been thing. isolated. And so and it is like when it was introduced, it is that you sit and you talk to everybody and they have a very... You know, actually on Prince Edward Island at the bed and breakfast that we stayed at, we, you know, had had breakfast with a couple from Montreal and the lady was born in Montreal and the husband was actually from Chicago. She's got it. She had a very, very heavy, thick French accent. And she, we were talking about, oh, well, we're going to go, we're on our drive home. We're going to be hitting places like, you know, Quebec City and Montreal and since you live in Montreal, where do you, where, where do you suggest we go? She's like, skip Montreal, spend more time in Quebec city. I'm like, oh, okay. An honest oh, review. Oh, total honest review too. <laughs> um, and, and, Opinionated. Yeah. yeah, it's good. So we, so we did, we, we spent some time, couple, day and a half actually in Quebec city. And obviously there's much more time that needs to be spent there, but. I need to take my daughter who is learning high school French to at least get us through there oh, because nice. you do, I mean, yeah. everybody speaks English, but everybody else, you know, speak French and it's the, the, you can see on my Instagram page, the, a few pictures that I took both of my night shots and also, um, the daytime shots of old Quebec city and walking through there with, you know, just this whole activation of the street and the little alleyways the alleyways are used as like extensions of the shops and where local artists are setting up kind of like their easels with all of their like work and we bought some wow color pencil drawings of quebec city from this one artist and it was just you know just it's it's something that for some reason we're we aren't really too far off of having kind of that like activated street life in some of like these old city, these old downtowns that we were driving through kind of avoiding the highways and driving through some of these little old like main streets. But there's just something very, very American about our main streets versus their very European versions of it where like in like, old Montreal and old Quebec city. And even in Lunenburg, where we were at there, the street activity is so very European, you know, they use every space. All of the spaces are a place where you can have a cafe or an, you can cram, you can something, cram something in something there. In right. There. And it was just, you know, it was just, you know, totally. like, why, why, why don't we do this? It's like an old, old city. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, it was cool. so delightful. So, so delightful. Nice. Man. 
Well, how do you say goodbye in French, Cormac? Uh, au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> Good job.